Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tammy Kay and I have a cold, which is why I sound very weird today. But today we're painting and going through techniques of how to paint this lilac flower. We're gonna start off with some color mixing and then some techniques to really help slow down the process and just hone in to how to paint this flower. So we're doing a little bit of a new series and into the summer we'll see how long it lasts. But this week we're learning the techniques and next week we're gonna take the techniques we learned in this video for part two and we're gonna paint a full lilac composition. So stay tuned for that, but let's get into today's video. All right, friends, so we're spraying down the palette, get everything ready. And I've got my number eight round brush as well as the number 12 round brush. And so these are the two sizes that we're using today. And so we need to start mixing up our colors. Now I've got a variety of purples here and this one is a really nice dark blue purple that I already have on the palette. So we're just gonna put that in its full concentration and I'm gonna put my colors here and then we can paint or maybe I'll do it the opposite because otherwise I'll get my hand in it. So let's go ahead and just do a little swatching. So I've got a really nice dark purple color here. Okay. And then of course, if I were to add in a little bit of water, just take out a little bit of that color, a nice light one too. So we've got these different values, the dark and the light one. And then I've got another purple in my palette here. It's a little bit more of a warmer purple. It's got some more uh, red versus the blue in there. So we'll add that in as well. And then we can just dip that in, take off some of that paint and literally just see what that looks like. Very similar to what's going on here. There's a lot more water. You can see a contrast. So what happens if you take some pink and add that to your purple? All of a sudden this is a lot brighter. It's kind of glowing and you can use that for a contrast as well. And I'm not going to do the light one just because we know adding water is going to lighten that up and you know we can utilize that really well. So you've got this purple here. What if you want to take some blue and add that in and just kind of see what that does. So I've got a dark blue here adding that in and we'll just see if it looks a little different than this one. I'm making a little bit more blue. So I want to have a variety of things to work with here. All right, and so we'll add that to our palette as well. Kind of a nice, almost periwinkle color. I am going to take off some paint, dab it, and then just see a little lighter version right there. So we've got our purples, and if you want to go back to any original ones, I'm just going to mix it up real quick. I had some pink in there, right? And so this is more of a pinky color, but it's got some purple in there too. And then if you want to, you can just go straight up with some blue, which we'll probably use. And I'm just gonna put that there at the bottom. And there's a little bit of purple happening there just because my brush had a little bit of red still or a little bit of purple. And so let's go ahead and get started. Now with our greens, we'll just be really simple with that and we're not gonna mix those up ahead of time. So what I wanna start with is a really nice light base. I'm gonna use my number 12 round. So I'm gonna dip in the water bring some of that over here and I just want to add a little bit of light color in here. And this is not really where I'm starting to add in a lot of contrast. I've got my paper towel here so I like to dab my brush just to control how much water is um, on my brush and going on my paper. So now I'll dab a little bit more. It's a little bit puddly. So what I want to do is start slowly adding in little sketchy marks, okay? So we could say blobs of color. We're starting with a really pointed top and we're gonna to start to go out a little bit in the shape of a lilac. Here is my example um, that I did a while ago. And so we're kind of going for something like that, that cone shape. So when you're painting, you're thinking of leaving some white space. I grab some more of that color, leaving white space. And I am using the brush, pointing it outward and use it, you can even just press it in to create some little shapes because you're using the belly of the brush to create that shape of those blooms, all right? So just every time I go on from one side, I'm the point is out 
And then if I want to go on this side, I flip my brush and the point is out this way. Okay. So you can go as fast or as slow as you like. I'm grabbing more water, just kind of swirling it around just to get a little bit more pigment there. And now it's a little bit darker and that's fine. Kind of think about a tree shape maybe uh, that might help you. So, but I'm going to start tapering it back down like this as well. So we're not going complete triangle here, like maybe a pine tree. Um, grabbing some water, wiping it off and dabbing it. Now we're just getting a little bit lighter here. So you can work quickly like this if you want to and not really thinking too much about it. Or you can work methodically and slower and just think about the shape. How do you want it to look? If you want it really straight sides versus kind of having some bumpy marks kind of going out right there, then there's a little bit less here coming out again. We're looking for a more natural shape. All right, so I've got almost all of it outlined how I want to. And if you want that point on the outside, you flip your brush this way, this way. You're just doing this like wrist gymnastics here. So this part is not so terribly important because you are just, you know, adding in that first base layer. So it's nothing to be scared about. Now, if you want to start working a little bit of wet on wet, you can grab some of your darker color. It's more saturated, has less water, and you can just, while it's still wet, poke in a little bit more color and just see how those blooms kind of spread. And, you know, I would just be really random about it too. You know, not anything really like symmetrical, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna take my smaller brush, number eight round, use what you got. I'm gonna switch this around here. And I've got my green. So I have a nice sap green color. It's a little bit more yellowy. And I've got whatever's on my palette. I'm just not stressing about it. I've got a nice watery mix here. So I am gonna dab my brush before I paint, just so we can get rid of that puddle. And I'm going to, I'm actually, oh, there's a little bit of a furry thing there. I'm going to start here and with the tip of the brush, so very light pressure, guys, I'm not pressing really hard. Just going to create that stem going down and let's press a little bit more to get a bit thicker right there, okay? And you can always thicken this up a little bit going back. You're going to get spreading. You're going to get some of this blooming happening. That's okay. It's a beautiful thing with watercolor. And so we're going to be all right with that. So now I'm going to dip because I want to get more water and I'm going to make our leaves. So dabbing and we're going to just do a little bit of a stem right here, tiny little stem. And then, and I'm holding this really loose. We're going to press down with the belly make that shape of the brush. All right, and you lift up slow, you can get a little bit of a point there. Grab some more, dab it. On the other side, this is a little, a little curved shape. And then curve around, so you're pressing down. Then you're slowly lifting off pressure, and you're ending with a point. Now I do like to leave a little bit of that highlight there. I think that's really pretty. Now let's make our stem just a little bit longer. And let's do that on the other side. So a little bit of a stem. And now we are angling our brush and our wrist as I'm hitting this, making musical noises. And so that we can start with the point at the bottom again. And it feels awkward, but this is something you can practice and it gets easier. Press down with the belly and then curve around, slowly lift up. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, except you can grab more concentrated paint and that can be fun to try. Press down with the belly, lift up. And now we've got two leaves happening here. I think I'm going to add in, dab, another one right here. So we'll just pretend there's more stems by adding in another one. So curve around, press down, lift up very slowly. And if you want to add a little bit more water sometimes, dab it. We can do a third one here. Press down, curve around, lift up. Okay. 
Sometimes it looks a little wonky, so you just fix it, no worries. All right, so this base layer is almost dry, and we can start adding in some of these different shades. So we've got the, the bluish purple, and then this darker purple, which leans more on the blue side, but it's still that purpley color. Then we've got this reddish purple, it's got that pink in it, and we can just kind of decide where we want to put things, but before we do that, I'm going to take that wet brush, swirl it around, a little green on there, that's okay, and just grab a little bit of purple, dab, and there's parts here where I feel like I just want it to be a little bit like less, I don't know, boxy, so I'm just coming in, adding a few little parts that might stick out. Man, my voice is rough, guys. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Despite that, sometimes that cold comes on and we just, we're not ready for it, but we still have to work, still have to talk. All right, just a little bit more there. So I wanna grab some of these darker colors. You can see it's creamier, it's much thicker, has less water. All right, so dabbing our brush first to get off the excess. And then I'm just going to kind of randomly start putting in these little brush strokes. Maybe I do something that looks a little bit more like a blossom. Maybe I just do little blobs. Now that is wet on wet, so it's gonna spread. And sometimes I like to pick a side where I'll do more of that color, more than the other side. So again, I'm flipping over, so the pointed side is out. And just, it's like the flick of a wrist you got to just practice it because it feels a little bit foreign sometimes when you start that way. And if you don't want to flip it, you can do it this way. It's just a little bit of a different tip. But it's a good it's a good thing to practice, like I said. It just, you know, gives you another skill set. And, you know, that can be nice as you're learning. Okay, so we've added in a few of that purple. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to grab some of this bluish purple here and add a little more blue to it. A little more blue and you just play around dab it and then we're just gonna do maybe some tinier little sketchy marks little sketchy marks where you just really light pressure and you're just kind of moving the brush around making these cute little marks and it's gonna emulate these flowers these little blooms that make up this whole bunch and I just love doing this so sometimes you can just do little lines like that and your eye fills in the details. So at this point, I'm not trying to fill in all the white space, but I do want to utilize some of it, fill in some, and then others, just leave it there. And you can see I did some larger marks here, and now I'm just kind of going in, doing some tiny marks. And honestly, once it all comes together, you know, you're going to see a beautiful floral composition. You're not going to necessarily see the one mark where you feel like you messed up over here or you painted it too matchy-matchy or, you know, something wasn't to your liking. Okay, so we've utilized several of those colors. I'm going to grab some blue and I'm just going to grab it off screen, really concentrated blue, and just add in a few of those. I might do some big ones, so pressing down at the belly, right? And then I might do some tiny little little blip lines. I don't know what to call them, blip lines. So how is yours coming together? If you're enjoying this video, guys, please give it a like and let me know in comments what you enjoy about this painting. I'm gonna do that same trick again where I've got a wet brush. I'm just gonna swirl it around and pick up a little bit of color, dab it, and then I'm just going to like do some little blobbings in some of the white spaces because I feel like we just need it. Sometimes you have too much white space and that's okay because you can always fill it in. It's good to leave it. And then when you decide you don't really need it, then you can take it away. I mean, it's great. So just, you know, you want it to look natural. And I think here we need a little bit more <laughs> proven out. I'm gonna grab more of this purple color, kind of mix it with this original one. Dab my brush once again. And I want to darken up this side just a little bit. I feel like I want, you know, to have, maybe there's more shadow over here. I just want that to be kind of the main thing. A little bit more. All right, just a little bit. So now I do want to add a little more green. So 
I'm going to grab some more of that bright, sappy, yellowy green color. I always dab my brush. And then we're just going to kind of emulate, press down the belly, lift up slow, add a little bit of color there. And I'm just trying to kind of highlight some of it. Maybe I fill in some of it. And other ones, I just leave it. And that one I'm just going to leave and dab my brush. And then I'm going to just fill in the stem. Um, just darken it up now that it's dry, and we can do that. Guys, if you haven't checked out my description, I have a freebie that I just sent out. I'm going to actually take this green and now connect some of these little stemmy things. So you're going to see these little diagonal bits. And that's where, you know, the stems are inside and you can kind of see it through like little branches in a tree. So a freebie on how to let go of perfectionism in your art. And it's linked in the description. You sign up with your email and then you'll get subscribed to my, my mailing list, which you can cancel that at any time. But the freebie is how to deal with certain scenarios in art that make you anxious and then what you can do to counteract those, those scenarios as well as four different art exercises, activities that you can do to help you let go of being perfect in your art. So that's free for you to download. I hope you enjoy it and I hope that it's helpful and it's a learning experience for you. I hope, I hope, I hope. Also guys, I'm on Patreon where you can subscribe and become a member there, get exclusive content, which is so fun. We're gonna do a really watery mix here. We're gonna do some splatter. So just tap your brush and you can kind of move it around so it gets evenly distributed. All right, guys, that is our practice for lavender. Join us next week for that tutorial where we will take the skills we learned today and we will create a whole lilac composition. Hi, friends. I really hope you enjoyed painting the lilac flower with me and join us next week for part two as we'll be doing the full lilac composition. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it's linked below. That's my membership, lowest $3 a month. I also have two spaces left in my art retreat, something else to look forward to. And number three, I did mention the freebie on how to let go of art perfectionism. So that's all linked below for your perusal. Uh, thank you so much for being here, guys, and I'll see you later.